Hello and good afternoon, this is Nto63 here with a first episode of a new series. I am going to start in on uh, kind of a, a set of bite-sized builds, so to speak, where we kind of automate some small things in order to uh, make the larger picture that much easier. So in this episode, my goal is to explain probably what I think is the easiest way to automate thermal expansion dynamo shutoffs. By default, as most of you know if you're familiar with thermal expansion, the thermal, the various dynamos, magmatic, steam, reactor, etc., all of these will continue to burn power, even if they're full. You'll see this RF buffer here is completely full. It's trying to generate 8 RF a tick, but I can promise you it's not going anywhere. I intentionally have this shut up just for demonstration purposes. So, in a normal scenario, you're wasting fuel. So this, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to show you how I've built all this. I'm going to build a whole nother one of these, but let me just demonstrate real quick. I'm going to pop this lever, and I'm going to go ahead and drain some power out of that. Now the way we have things set up here, thanks to this little fancy power monitor from Ender IO, this will actually monitor the power being used and the amount of power in the capacitor bank it's adjacent to. And for demonstration purposes I just have it as a really small range, but you can set whatever range you want and say I want this capacitor bank to always be at least 70% full and if not then go ahead and run my dynamos. So that's kind of how we're going to build off of this and how we're going to go with it. As you'll see because I pulled that lever off, the, all these dynamos shut off, we're no longer making power, no, we're no longer burning fuel, and we're just waiting for something to actually lose enough power in order to kick the dynamos on. And that should happen any moment now. There you go. So there's the demonstration. Let's go ahead and actually build it. To start out, what I like to do is run my power conduits first, kind of get an idea of where I'm going to lay things out. From here, we add our dynamos. And again, you can pretty much use any type of dyno you want. Yeah, let's not put that there. In the case of magmatics, obviously we need some lava. You can use pretty much any method of fluid or any method of power transfer you want. I just have interconduits because they're kind of convenient. And let's go ahead and obviously we're in creative here so just going to creative cheat some stuff in here. Review, review, and fill. Now with Ender I.O. conduits, and obviously this will be different if you're using a different conduit system, you do want to check this, extract, and I'm going to always want to extract when you don't have a signal. So that's kind of by default. And now these dynamos are all getting power. I'm sorry, these dynamos are all getting fuel so they can make power at 80 RF a tick. And if you're familiar with thermal expansion, there's ways to upgrade this. Now over here, as if I looked over at my reference model for a second here, what we've done is set a capacitor bank down so we can drain all the power into that as needed. And I'm going to throw a, an Ender IO power monitor behind it. Now, if anyone was really paying attention earlier, you'll notice I actually have a computer in my inventory. My original plan for this setup was to use what I was previously using in one, my 164 worlds. I actually tried setting this up with my 164 code, and it's not working. So, uh, it's, to me, it appears that uh, peripheral wrapping has changed completely and is not interfacing with thermal expansion cells very well. Either I'm doing something wrong or that's completely changed. Either one is very possible. What I'm also going to do while I'm here, I'm going to run some red alloy wire. And admittedly, this can be pretty much any type of redstone you want. I bet you you could probably do this with vanilla redstone dust. You could do it with the Ender IO uh, redstone conduits, all kinds of options there. And the important thing is that this power monitor has 
redstone of some sort connecting to the dynamos directly. In here, I'm going to go ahead and enable. And for again, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to set a really, really small window here, just between 78 and 80% full, just so we can see it flip back and forth. Now, let's get some power connected out of here. And this is important. If you hold the shift on this, this will actually tell you, you need to have a power conduit attached to this power monitor. The power monitor kind of sees this whole network, everything it's connected to, and it kind of gets an idea of what power is being used on this network specifically. Now, you don't need an additional energy cell in this line. I'm kind of using it as a sample for being able to drain power and simulate having, let's imagine we have 20 machines on here all pulverizing and cooking everything in here. So this is going to drain some power. I'm going to let this sit at max for a minute. And these are running. All right. Now by default, there's a couple things that aren't quite the way we want. I'm going to go ahead and change things around. So each one of these dynamos, by default, are actually ignoring redstone signal. This is this is generally good unless you want to set up this type of system. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set this all to high. I like to, whenever possible, set my redstone machines so that on is on and off is off. So if the redstone signal is on, then I want the machine on. So that's kind of how I'm going to do it for here. And I'm going to, now that you've totally killed my capacitor bank, I'm going to go ahead and turn you off. Now what should happen here, and this may actually take a minute, I might give it a little bit of a boost. Um, this will detect that the capacitor bank and this power network has drained below this 78% full, or the, the first box here. Because this bank is definitely 78% full or less, we are emitting a redstone signal. Because we are emitting a redstone signal, these dynamos have turned on. Because these dynamos have turned on, we are gaining power. The power is going through the conduit into the inner, uh, capacity bank. And then, as needed, it's being fed out to our imaginary machines over here. So in this simulation right now, my machines aren't running because, you know, I'm not draining any power. All right, we are back. I stepped away for just a second there. I let the capacitor bank fill up. We are getting really close to the 78% mark here. I'm sorry. When we're filling up, we're actually going to 80% before we shut off the dynamo. So this 2% uh, range in between these two, we're always going to be running if we're charging up. So hopefully what we'll see here in a moment is this capacitor bank will fill up this alloy wire will then shut off and shortly after the dynamos will shut off. And that should happen right at 40. Give or take. Alright, the red alloy wire just shut off and in a moment we'll stop consuming lava. So now we're have a power output of zero, which means we're not burning anything. All four of these shut off at the same time. And my lava source, which, you know, obviously is not a concern right now, but it would be in a survival world, we're not burning the lava. We're, we're conserving, and we know we have enough power to get us through. Now, one thing to note, this uh, power monitor does consume a little bit of power. I think it's worth it in this type of setup here, especially if you have a larger capacitor bank. So that just a little bit of drain there, if you actually look at this, it actually tells you we're burning one RF per tick right now over the last five seconds. And so that's all the power monitor. Let's go ahead, we're gonna simulate running a couple machines. So now we are dropping much quicker we are doing an average output of 201 because 200 is going to my energy cell and one is going to the power monitor. 
and we're going to wait until this goes down to 78% full and then these should kick on again just like that and there you have it that's pretty much the simplest easiest way in, a, in the average 1.7 pack to be able to automate the thermal expansion dynamos shutting on and off you could obviously extend this and do this with steam uh, the nice thing about the Ender I.O. conduits is you could very easily put item conduit filter, uh, I'm sorry, item conduits along the top here and push charcoal down into it and then have the, the fluid do water instead of lava, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, I hope you enjoyed. Please give a thumbs up if you liked, and until the next one, take care.